I'm Adnan. I'm 11 years of age and the emotional title for my image is Sora. Hi. Hi Adnan, nice to meet you. Are oh, you fought your fate, eh? Yeah. I've wanted to talk about this, it's amazing. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Where it came about is that I wanted to use a flower for this photo, but they were in the bin. So I told my grandma, I'm getting those flowers. So I went in the bin and rummaged out. So I couldn't find where to put it. So I decided to put it in the radiator because I thought the wall between nature and technology. So there was some real dedication in getting the photo. Yeah. <laughs> I like it that it was taken in the home and that's normally a place you feel most comfort. <laughs> and you can tell that even though last year it was a place for comfort, we learned that we needed much more than home. I think the funny part is that I took this with a computer camera. With a computer camera? A computer camera. <laughs> so that's the worst quality. <laughs> no, it's a great photo. Yeah. And, and it must have been cool seeing this on billboards as well. Yeah, I used on a billboard in Lambeth. It's amazing. Well, how about I show you a few of my photos, because I think your story is kind of similar to how I felt a while back as well. Several years ago, I was quite ill and in hospital for about 11 months. And when I come out, I found it really hard to connect to the outside world. Almost overwhelming. I couldn't really deal with talking to people, so it started with landscape photos. And a bit like you, setting that photo up of the flower, I used to take a little white chair places and put it in the environment and take some photos. Okay, interesting. As I got a bit better, I started a project, Portrait Per Day, where I take a photo of a stranger nearly every single day. This is of a great guy called Alex that I've stayed friends with and we still talk, which is really nice. So you're making friendships and bonds? Yeah, it's a great community and I think that's something you can't forget. And even with you, all the people you've connected with through your photos is fantastic. This is a lady called Evelyn and she told me all about her husband and how he loved photography and he used to take his camera with him. And she's still got all of his photos. It doesn't always have to make your mental health better, but it makes others' mental health better. So you're spreading positive vibes. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. It's a photo of my nan. And I used to take her to a pie and mash shop every single fortnight. And she actually bought me my very first digital camera. And even though she wasn't very happy, this photo is now something that we'll remember her by. Doing the thing she loved the most, going for pie and mash with her grandson. So now I've seen your amazing photo and I've shown you a few of mine. Seeing as you said your nan brought you here today, how about we see if we can recreate the picture I took of my nan? Sounds like a good idea. Yeah? Happy with that? Yeah. One of the things when I try to take a portrait is to try to connect with a person. And it's not always easy when it's a stranger. Mm -hmm. So this is a great way for you to start yeah. and take a photo of somebody that you know. You've got to look for where the light is and how the light's falling on your nan's face. And if you look from the left, it's lighting up the side of her face. Shall we try to take one on your phone? See, so you look at how the light's falling on the face. Just like you're doing with your portrait mode, you can create a blurry background like the photo of my nan. That's a great composition with all the light coming through the window. He's talented, isn't he? Mm -hmm. That one. <laughs> Thank you. So did you find it easier taking photos of someone so close like your nan? Yeah. You it, it almost made, it, you, know, you get a certain feeling, I can't really describe it. Do you think you'd find it more tricky taking pictures of people you didn't know? Yeah, because I don't know what will offend them or not. Like, if, if you take a picture in a certain way, they might not like it. But that's amazing that you understand how you can affect people through for your actions, so I think that means puts you in a pretty good position to be a great photographer. Should we have a little walk outside and we perhaps try and mix your style of photography and some of my portraits? You are now my student. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got some great photos of your nan, should we try and find some other good characters to take some photos of? Yes, yeah, sounds good. What about that guy on the back there? Sorry, excuse me, mate. Oh yeah, we're just out shooting some photos today. We just saw you doing some really cool tricks on your bike. Just wondered if we could take a few shots just to learn how to use different types of cameras and stuff. Yeah, I don't mind, why not? Yeah, I'm John, this is Adnan. I'm H, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What? Yeah, yeah let's nice. do that. <laughs> Yo, H, can you do a trick? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Get ready. That's amazing, isn't it? What's often good when you take photos is find a little story. So you, it's good to ask some questions on how they got into what they do. Wow. How long have you been doing it, H? Six years. 
six years. Get a nice cool effect. Wide angle. That's it. So you can see the handlebars. That's a great there photo. It is. The light's sort of shining slightly from this side. So if we were to come around here, come a bit closer in, and just if you look straight down the lens. Sometimes it's more natural if they don't look down the camera. So if I tell him to look at me, and look then you him. get a photo. Well, that's perfect. Yeah? That was good. Nice one. H, thanks, man. Should we have a quick look at some of the photos and see what you think? Yeah. Some of the photos of your nan, it's amazing how different the pictures are when we've both taken them. Yeah. So my one, a little bit different to yours, you get an amazing smile on the ones that you've taken. Let's yeah, see yours, see? Eh? that one. And that's kind of it. We've sort of stopped and taken a photo and we've managed to both get a completely different outcome. <laughs> and then we've met H as well and that was cool. Yeah, there's H. And again, it's different watching him do his stuff naturally and then take a pose photo, you get a completely different yeah. feel, don't you? From that photo, what will you remember? It's not just that moment, is it? It can be yeah. the whole day and everything that's been part of. Well, you've taught me a few tricks. Hopefully I've taught you something. And uh, hopefully you can get a few more amazing photos like you did last year and from mm. today, yeah? Yeah. Brilliant. The task I'd like you to do is to stop a moment take a portrait and create a memory. I'm Nia, I'm 16. This is my photo, Shadow and Stairways, and it represents the feeling validation. Hi. Hi, I'm Mike. Hi, I'm Nia. Nice to meet you, Nia. Hi. So this is your image from the Show and Tell project. Yeah, it Tell is. me about it. So basically, the main um, focal point of the photo is the landing of yeah. my stairs in the house. Yeah. What I love about the photo is obviously, because it was like mid-afternoon when I took it, it created this lovely shadow. Yeah, yeah. So with a bit of editing, I was able to create this really beautiful image from something that I would often go ignored. So, so what's the emotion behind the photo? I put the emotion validation. I wanted okay. my photo to reflect that. It's a bit obscure, but I just yeah. feel the fact I was able to capture a subject that would often go unnoticed. Yeah, yeah, which reminds me a lot about street photography. You go around looking for things that most people wouldn't notice. Yeah, exactly. But you could bring the mundane moments to life. You put so much like emphasis on it, like it becomes yeah. the main thing you look at. Yeah, yeah. And just, I think like, that photo, it captures just that essence of taking really something like unnoticed, putting it, showing everyone, so. It's really good, really good. So I started out with photography doing a lot of skateboarding and BMX stuff. Oh, right. So I spent most of my days at a skate park. And then yeah. when I realised and understood the basics of photography of oh, how wow. I can show some of my friends in the best light as possible. That's brilliant. I realised that some of these techniques with the, using the leading lines yeah. and things like that could be used for street photography. Mm. And then these kind of photos, oh, looking for different compositions, leading lines. Mm. So if we look at this photo of the shard here. Oh, I love that. That's brilliant. Well, I like the, the use of the bridge and the, yeah. the staircase to kind of frame the shards. Mm. So it's like a frame within a frame. And another photo I've loved taking recently was this reflection shot. Oh, that's excellent. So it's a good way of using light as well. This puddle mm. was on the floor. The reflection was just not creating a nice mirror image of the person crossing the street. Yeah. So it's these techniques, which I originally learned from skate parks. You can oh. now apply it to the street. Mm. Similar to what you noticed here with your landing, you yeah. can apply that kind of stuff to street photography. So it'd be good today to go through some of these techniques using mm. different frames and using reflections yeah. to create some good street photography photos. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, let's do it. Cool. So this is Shad Thames. I love coming around here to take some photos. The architecture is so unique. The cobble, the texture, looking up with the bridges as well. Yeah. It's a good opportunity to get creative with some different photos. 100%, there's so much potential as well. Like, there's so much to photograph. The photo I showed you earlier with yeah. the reflection. Oh, I yeah, want to yeah. try and see if we can create something similar. We'll get some water on the floor. The texture of the cobble as well might reflect the architecture. Oh, that'd be really so, cool. Let's see what we can do. That's brilliant, let's do it. This should look really good, yeah. So what we can do now is, now we've created a little puddle, go onto the camera and get the lens as close to the puddle okay. as possible. We just take one simple photo there. Oh. You go right in the middle of the reflection, oh, maybe tap on screen so you can focus in the background. Maybe pull it a little bit closer to the puddle there. Perfect. Oh, here we go. That's so good, yeah. Boom. Maybe tilt it up a little bit. Yeah, that's it. Oh, this is brilliant. It's all about getting the lens as close to the puddle as possible. Maybe just straighten it up a little bit. Yeah, that's there you good. Go. That's really good. 
The reflection's actually really clear as now, well. The cobble's created loads of detail for yeah. us as well. It's something I wouldn't think to do. Once Honestly, you've done the it once, so good. yeah, yeah, exactly. you, can, you can spot things like that on every street, anywhere you look. Yeah, really, it allows really you good. to be quite present as well in the moment and focus yeah. right, what is around me and how can I make this look different. So another technique that I like to use is to look around you and use the environment to frame different subjects. So like the photo I showed you earlier with the shard, yeah, yeah. instead of just taking a photo of the shard, I use the bridge and the stairway to like create a nice triangle frame. So we could do something similar here. So we've got Tower Bridge. If I just hold my phone up and take a photo, that mm. maybe might be quite boring. But yeah. instead, we've got these railings here. So if we incorporate them into the foreground, and then make sure they're in frame, they kind of lead the viewer's eyes. Yeah into the subject. Oh, that instantly looks so much better. That's really good, yeah. Yeah, because normally I, I would be that person who just takes a normal picture of it. Yeah, and it's yeah. just like, ta-da! But that actually, that imp yeah, by doing it with just, the railings. Again, it's just like looking around. What have we got around us? The railings lead your eyes into the subject that we're taking a photo yeah, of. Yeah, that's really clever. That's really, really good. Once you've seen a couple of those techniques, you can repeat that everywhere you go. That's exactly. why street photography is so good as well, because no matter where you are, no matter what street, what path, whatever city you're in, there's always external frames, there's yeah. always reflections. Those techniques that we've done today can be used everywhere. Yeah, they're in like, the back of my mind now, so I'm yeah. going to think to do it, like, okay, let's see what's around me, what else can I add to like, the photo? Yeah, yeah, it's good. So I hope you've enjoyed the photos I've taken today. Yeah, no, I really have. What has been the best photo you've taken, I definitely you say my favourite was the one we did with the water. Honestly, I think that was so creative. This sort of composition using the reflections as well can be found anywhere. Yeah. So windows can be reflections, puddles can be reflections, or you can even create your own reflection yeah. like we did with the water, which looked great. It's something you wouldn't really think to do, but now, now you know that technique. Yeah, it's something yeah. I'm going to constantly the, the do. The best thing about these techniques as well is, one, they can be found anywhere you mm. look on every street, but the fact you have to slow down, focus, yeah. appreciate your environment appreciate the now and just kind of like how, how can we make this creative and then those techniques we've learned can be applied everywhere we go it's just it's nice all the techniques because you kind of you think where you are you think about your surroundings and what you can kind of add yeah. to the photo yeah. i've and learned can, a lot genuinely yeah yeah you can take these out and wherever you take photos hopefully your photography will progress and yeah that's good no thank you it's been brilliant it's been really good so the task I would like you guys to do is next time you go out and shoot street photography is to look around you. Can you spot any lines that can create some unique compositions just to add that 10% to your street photography? As human beings, we've evolved to need other people. Loneliness causing mental health problems in lockdown has shown us just how important this is. Getting involved with our community and connecting with our friends and family through things like photography is a great way to boost our mental health. When we're feeling stressed or anxious, it can be hard to feel better by ourselves, but spending time with other people has really powerful effects on our mind and bodies. Just being around other people without even needing to talk about what we're going through can send signals to the brain to help us feel calm, safe and engaged.